Hey, this is Matt once again. What about the other videos? The other paid requests this time for Edward. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, this is f uh, for South Park Season 12, Episodes 9 and 10. Now, Episode 9 I really did enjoy because it was a fun take on a movie that I think is underrated called 3 O'Clock High. 3 O'Clock High from the 80s, I want to say 1987, starring, at the time, some unknown people, Casey Shamasco, who would later be in Young Guns, and Richard Tyson, who would later be in Kindergarten Cop as the villain. Uh, about this kid in school and he accidentally messes he didn't do it on purpose but gets the ire of this new student who's a big old scary guy play Richard Tyson going when we'll fight at three o'clock and throughout the, the day it's all these things that the our lead tries to do to get out of it tries to pay him money tries to pay someone to beat him up none of it ever works and then it's one of those things that it seems typical, but the way it's done with the Tangerine Dream music and the way it's filmed at times feels just very unique. Like sometimes the music sounds like a horror film and the way it's directed is just very unique and uh, different. Like the camera shots, which somewhere in here, like when Cartman, he pisses off the girl Wendy because Wendy's trying to talk about breast awareness and Cartman keeps making fun of him. Make you fun of the whole thing, make you fun of her. So she gets pissed and says, I'm going to beat you up at 3 o'clock. And Carmen shows it off and then he gets scared. And then he tries to pay her off. He tries to say, listen, I'll do this. I'll eat my own underwear. I'll do all this other stuff. And she won't have it. Then she tried to, then Carmen tries to mess with her or cry to his mom. To then cry to her parents so that she won't fight. But there are moments like Carmen's in class and looking at the clock and the way the camera is like at the clock up close. That's definitely some shots from Three O'Clock High. Carmen trying to bribe her. That's like the him trying to bribe her, the bully in Three O'Clock High. I swear even when Wendy finally has had enough and is going up to fight him, the music, I swear, has a little bit of a tangerine dream feel to it. I don't think it's music from the movie. That would have been cool, though. I, I That would have been nice to see music from the movie in it. But I kind of wish they even pushed the Three O'Clock High stuff even more. But I swear there's a little bit like Tangerine Dream feel to the music. Which was great, because that movie deserves a bit more love. And it's not like a typical movie to get referenced, but... And it's also nice to see Cartman gets just desserts because when he gets beaten up, he gets beaten to a bloody pulp. And just, like, Cartman punches her, but nothing happens. But then when she punches him and slamming him in, in the stuff, uh, he just, like, bloodied up. And it's like, okay, Cartman does deserve that. <laughs> and Cartman, before acting like an asshole to Stan, oh, come on, Stan, don't be a pussy. Like, why don't you tell your girlfriend that... You know, I don't want to hurt my my bro's bitch. Or... The way some of the other characters are reacting to it. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny. It, like I said, the whole aesthetic... Wendy getting a little bit more for that character to do. To stand up to Tarpman. The way Carmen was being a dick about it, but oh, be careful! There are killer titties on the loose. Like I, said, I thought they did a nice job with with uh, making you understand Wendy's plight and why she wants to get revenge on Carmen, and like Carmen deserved it. So it's not like you feel bad for him when he does get his comeuppance and how he'll be talking loud, but then he'll be whispering these apologies to her. Listen, I'm really sorry, Wendy. We don't need to. We don't need to do this. Well, if you're so sorry, tell it to everybody. Where everyone can hear you. Oh, what are you talking about, bitch? But actually, I'm really sorry about it. It's just a conniving little asshole. This conniving little shit. And I'm surprised. I mean, 
some people keep talking to Stan, or you don't say or do something. He's like, I don't know what to do. Which I guess is a case. I'm just surprised that Stan didn't try to do a bit more, like stand up for his girlfriend, or Stan try to beat up Cartman as well, or something to that effect. I will admit there's a part of me that wondered if they were going to do a twist on the cliche and still have Cartman win and beat Wendy. They even though he's bled up, but he beats Wendy and he wins. Sort of to play off the... Do something you wouldn't expect. So again, there's a part of me that I wonder if they'll, even though Cartman's getting beat up, if he'll still win and beat Wendy. Because and... sometimes they do that, but no, they didn't here, I guess. They let, yeah, let Wendy win. Let Wendy beat the shadow of Cartman. Which does happen. So yeah, I like the back door between Wendy and Cartman. I like... I mean, I remember, I remember there was an episode that Cartman kind of liked Wendy. And it's sad that that never came back to fruition. That never came back to the limelight. And that's pretty much forgotten. I figured it would be. But uh, it's too bad like no references of that could have been put into place. Like they separated and Carmen's like he's okay with it. But then he wasn't okay with it and he was sad. But yeah I mean I pretty much suspected they would never mention that again. And it's true. Because that's the thing with a lot of cartoons uh, like this. Is that if that type of stuff happens it's not going to get referenced again. It's going to be conveniently forgotten for a next time. But, like I said, I like the 3 o'clock high references. I like the setup of the plot. I like that Carbon Guys just deserves from Wendy, an unlikely source. Uh, I mean, part of me kind of wishes it was Butters. I think that would be even funnier if it was Butters. But at the same time, I, I just see it wouldn't work because Carbon would not have been afraid of Butters. And that's the joke is that Carbon's afraid of Wendy. He's afraid of Wendy beating him up. So uh, I get why. It, it, as I say it out loud, it makes more sense why it's Wendy. I don't know, I just for some reason like the idea of that Butters would want to beat up Cartman. I, don't know, I just like that idea. Although it's a bit weird that Butters is actually for Cartman and wants him to beat up Wendy. Like, Butters is like his number one fan. Do you do it, Cartman? I really don't know why, considering how much Cartman has done such ill will to Butters, but for some reason Butters is behind Cartman all the way on this. Or he really doesn't like Wendy for some reason. <laughs> but yeah. That was a pretty fun episode. Episode 10, it's the first of a two-parter. And I don't know how I feel about this. It's kind of just weird for weird sake. But I didn't really find it that funny. Pretty much the kids are in the mall. And there's a lot of people playing these Peruvian pan flutes. You know, the flute, doo, 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 doo. So the kids get annoyed at seeing these people all over the place. Although Kenny seems to like it. And he does this kind of dance with his hands. But all the other kids hate it. So they figure, wow, these people play this bad music. They get a lot of money. So they go to this kid named Craig. And make them... Give him the hundred dollars he got from his grandma. And Trade's like, why do I want to do it? But they force him anyway. So they start a band at a mall. They start making money. But then long story short, the government says, we need to get rid of all these flute bands. Um, the, the pan flute. The reason I mentioned the pan flute is because they make the joke pan flute epidemic you mean a pandemic yeah before I mean this was many many years before you know that in the US so it has a different even more of a connotation nowadays but it has called a pandemic because of the flute the pan flute bands so they rouse them all up they get them all up including the kids there put them in the internment camp the flute band internment camp in Miami And I would say the only humor I got some chuckles out of was this other guy, Craig, making fun of the other kids, going, 
you know, this is why people at school think you're assholes. This is why people at school don't want to hang out with you. Because you guys keep doing stuff like this. And you never learn your lesson. And no one else wants to hang out with you. And the kids don't really have much to say other than, you know, get mad at Craig. Even though Craig is right. So I would say Craig is really the only thing that got me some chuckles off is that outside character, the outside kid. Which he's been in a few other stuff. So they use him every once in a while. And the only other thing going on is Stan's dad, Randy, has a video camera they won't put down. And it's just to do a Cloverfield reference. Because of all of the pan flute bands being taken, no one's playing it. So now these creatures come by and it's just real guinea pigs. Like actual guinea pigs that they put on the drawings. And Randy has a camera and is don't, doing like Cloverfield. People screaming, the camera go over the place, toss of monsters. So, I'm guessing this came out when Cloverfield came out. I don't remember the year this came out, to be honest. Well, actually, let me look it up real quick. Hopefully it doesn't affect the audio, because sometimes the Audacity audio doesn't like it when you have other sounds. I don't know. I'm still trying my best with this Audacity audio. Yeah, 2008. March 2008. So yeah, it was. that's when the, the season began. And this aired October 2008. Or, yeah, October 2008. So it's definitely taped on... Uh, Cloverfield, because they came out in 2008 as well. The detention center in Miami used to hold the band members in a reference to that used after the Mario Bolt lift, and which was featured prominently in the 1983 film Scarface. Danny Pitch shown in the episode are an important cultural symbol of Peru, another Andean cultures did not know that. I said the the episode I didn't really care a whole lot for. It's like okay, this is weird, and it's different, but I didn't really laugh a whole lot. I didn't other than Craig and once of his once in a while his funny digs at the kids, the other main characters. It's like okay, it's another big crisis. With some weird stuff going on. And. I don't know. I just. The Randy stuff with the camera. He got really annoying. Before that stuff really came into play. So just annoyed by the Randy character. Uh, pan flute bands. I mean. I, I don't know. I just don't really have any issue with them. So the whole thing that they're so annoying. I didn't really get. Because I was indifferent on their music. And I'm kind of sitting there going, okay, that was different, that was weird, but did I laugh much? Not really. I don't know how else to put it. Kind of, eh, wasn't really big on it. And I don't know if there's a story that needed a two-parter to it. Like the episode 9, stories like that between like Wendy and Carmen, like that stuff... Amongst the characters close knit, uh, usually seems to be kind of some of the better stories with South Park. There are exceptions, of course, but those are the ones I've seen a bit more funnier, maybe a bit more close to home, things in between. And uh, I would say that one I like more than the pan flute one. But that's just me. But with that said, thanks for watching. Thanks once again, Edward, for your generosity. And we will see you guys later.